First things first, thank you all for coming here tonight. Well, it's happy hour, so I was going to say this afternoon, this evening, but it's happy hour. So, uh, Just a few quick thank yous, because these events don't happen by themselves. This is a team effort. And uh, Monica, talking about the bar, the 19th hole, uh, Monica and her staff uh, for setting up that. Pete and his staff, outside service, Paul, Kyle, and everybody. Uh, and of course, our pros, I don't see anyone here tonight. Uh, Drew's our first assistant, and Ben and, and Nick. And our two new assistants, uh, Amon and Tommy. So welcome to them. Um, so yes, so most importantly, thanks to you. And actually, we had a hole-in-one yesterday, and Laura's here tonight, so. Yeah. yeah. Is that oh. the first one? Third. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, congratulations nice shot so so and Mike Malaska I'm sure you're all getting to know Mike and uh, we're thrilled that he's here at Fire Rock and on a personal note I'm looking forward to working with uh, with you and uh, you. We'll, this is our first event um, so we'll just uh, go from here as they say so tonight well we decided we would start with practice Purposeful practice. Now, we didn't advertise that because we wanted you to come. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. <laughs> Hit your driver farther. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> so we're going to just tag team tonight. We welcome questions at any time. We'll finish with Q&A and, you know, whatever you want. But if someone's got a question, you know, just fire away. So I'm just going to start uh, with actually talking about a little bit about the warming up before you play. Okay, it's different than the practice. Mike's got a practice station set. And so when you come down to hit to play a pre-game play, what does that look like? Because that's not really practice. It's just warming up. So not only am I holding this club because I get withdrawal if I don't, I'm holding it because it's my lob wedge and it's my shortest club. And when I'm warming up to play, I start with my shortest club. Okay, it's depth perception. Hand, my hand is closest to the ground and the ball with this club. If I start with my driver, yeah, okay, the ball's in the tee, but it takes a little minute, you know, to get that feel going. So I start just hitting some small shots, and I'll hit many more. If I did this the other day, I timed it in lieu of tonight. I timed myself on what I would consider a warm-up session, and it took 10 minutes, okay? I hit, I'll just tell you what I hit, and then I'll, we'll get cracking here. Um... I didn't count how many shots, but I hit way more wedges than any other club, okay? I have finished with the club I hit on the first tee, which for me is a driver. Ooh, sorry. Uh, is a driver. Some of you may not start your round with a driver. Make sure you hit the club you're going to tee off with, so it's not a like, oops, where did this come from when you get up there? Um, so I'll just hit a few shots, and Mike's going to jump in here as well. You know, I find it interesting when, when you look at the best players in the world, <clears throat> when they start out, they're making small swings. They're not in a rush to make big full swings and certainly not at full speed. Now, the reality is what you're watching Pam do here, most of you say, well, I'm only hitting my wedge, but I watch you and your arms are going the same speed they go with your driver. So whether you have a wedge in your hand or a driver in your hand, if you're standing there and you're going at full speed, what she's doing right now, you have no idea. You're not doing any of this. And I watch people, <clears throat> and they're way too quick to make two biggest swings too fast to see how far they can make the ball go. Now, she starts there. I start right here. Oops. That's a bad demo. So I'm going <laughs> to so I'm, so I'm do it again. Oops. So what am I going to do? Am I going to go any farther? Am I going to just say, oh, well, that's going to be better? Oh. No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, what's going on where, oh, man, I'm still, what's going on? Well, let's see if we can't, oh, there we go. Right. So I start with this little movement pattern right here. Now, here's what's interesting. Both Pam and I, I've spent years picking up ranges, hitting balls over to my shag bag, I mean, I can sit there and do it. anything you want me to do with this, run it into that ball. Now, if I'm not catching that ball solid with that little teeny drill, I'm not even going where she's at. 
So you start, you got to calibrate your hand-eye coordination and start learning how to put the club on the ball before you start making big swings. And I watched most of you come out, I've watched it here, and you stand there, and here's your warm-up. <laughs> and then the first ball you hit, it's the same deal. So hopefully we can get you into a habit where you start to learn skills. And you learn those skills and you build on those skills. So golf is very simple if you know the skills and you build the patterns. If you assume a level of control and you jump past it, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 plus 8 is 22. If you go any further, it's likely that it's not going to get the right answer. That's what happens with your golf swing. So don't be in a big rush to see how far you can hit it. So what she's doing here is fantastic, and I don't see anybody doing that. I, I mean, I've watched it now, and it's not just here. It's every place I've been, and I've done golf schools for 20 years. I've seen over 200,000 people. When you've had that many people, you've watched that many cadavers, you have a pretty good idea of where, what everybody does wrong and why they do it. You know, it's just experience. And something I was going to mention, I'm curious what Mike thinks. Um, when I'm warming up to play, I'm not judging my shots. I'm not going to hit one. Like Mike just hit a couple there, right? He didn't go, God, I wonder what happened, right? He just hit the next one. So when you're getting ready to go play, it's game on and it's play golf. It's golf shots. You come here and practice. It's golf swing or it's your putt. It's whatever you're working on, okay? So when you're warming up to play, just keep hitting. You know, take your time, but keep hitting. Work through the bag and don't judge your shots. You know, just don't get caught in, in thoughts right off the bat before you're even on the first tee because I know they're coming up there. <laughs> yeah. Yes? When you say work through the bag, do you go through every club or do you do every three or four clubs? Up? Uh, thanks, Kathleen. No, what I do is, for me, I do my lob wedge. Like I said, most of my shots are hit with my wedges. So this is my lob wedge as Mike and I were doing short shots. Then I go to a pitching wedge, an 8-iron, a 6-hybrid, I like even numbers, uh, and then I hit a few drives, okay? So when I leave my golf cart, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm not staring at my bag in the cart going, hmm, right? I know exactly. So I pick out the clubs and come over, and I, like I said, I timed myself. It was like, you know, 10 minutes. You could allow yourself 15 minutes and just hit a few shots once you get past the warm-up stage with the other clubs. So thanks, Kathleen. Uh, I have a very definite plan. It's purposeful. That's what we're going to talk about, practicing and playing and warming up with a purpose. So thank you. Yeah. Now what Pam just said there about shots, I'm going to try to make this as simple as I possibly can because I my mind's really simple. And when I started, this game was really easy and I was really good, really fast. And then I was co taught then I got trapped into, let's take some lessons and really make you good. And well intended that they were, it really derailed my career. So here's the game. It's a club face and a ball. It's being able to put this club face on the ball in a manner that makes the ball go where you want it to go and curve the way you want it to go. What controls this? My hands. Mm -hmm. Now, what, this is where we get in trouble. You got a club shaft. So all of a sudden, people think that, that this thing's the game. No, that's the game. So this is how I hold a club face in my hand. That's the orientation of it in my hand. If it's my left hand, it sits like this. Now, if I want to make the ball go lower than this club's designed to hit it, all I have to do is take loft off the face. If I want to hit it higher, curve it left, curve it right. Sits in my right hand like this. Low, high, left, right. Now, I'm going to hit one here. Yeah. Can you make a fairly quick decision? That was good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start my backswing. And when I start my backswing, you call, I don't care. You say high, low, hook, fade. You call any shot you wanted to call. When I start my backswing, you ready? <laughs> yeah, okay. You have to you have to call it before I change directions, okay? That's why I ask if you could make a fairly quick decision. So you got another shot. Are you ready? 
No. It's your turn. High, low, hook, fade. I don't care when I start my backswing. Okay, you ready? Yep. Great. Okay, that faded. You got another shot? You ready? Go. I mean, this is this is simple. <laughs> that freaking ball's not moving. It's sitting still. And I start back. Now, if I've trained my hands, which most of you haven't, your grips aren't very good. You've never really trained your hands. You've trained your body. Clear your hips, shift your weight and all that. I start to club back. I've got all of this time, and all I've got to do in all that time is just move that face a few degrees. The ball's not moving. That makes the game, this is an easier game than baseball, tennis, or any of them to hit the ball. It doesn't move. And I don't care what people tell me. I've been doing this a long time. You start a moving ball coming at you, that is harder to do than a stationary ball. The reason that stationary ball is harder to hit for most of you is because it doesn't move, you don't become an athlete. Now you're thinking about every little thing you have to do. You're not putting the racket on the ball. Does that make sense? So we've got to get you when you're warming up. The first thing is to start to get, what did Pam say? She hit shots. You have to stand there and hit shots, curve the ball. Doesn't necessarily mean that it goes at your target, but you curve the ball so you start to get some sense of how to control what the ball's gonna do. Does that make sense? Most of you don't do that. The first few swings, big swings, you're not trying to hit shots, you're trying to make a swing. Good players hit shots, amateurs try to make swings. Does that make sense? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, totally agree. So I brought this to show you, but it's kind of what we're saying. So here you go. Hi, <laughs> right? If the clubs were this small, and the ball was this big, <laughs> Right? That's perfect. Golf would be easy. We wouldn't hit it very far right enough. But we'd never miss the ball. Right, Mike? And as Mike says, in you know, other sports, it's kind of like everyone's pickleballing, right? Pickle. If you start with a ping pong paddle and you go to pickleball, uh, oops, what's it called? It is a paddle, sorry. It's a <laughs> ping pong bat. Pickleball bat. Anyway, a tennis racket. Your hand's getting progressively further from the club. So you can learn to control it in golf. Um, as the clubs get longer, you just, it's timing and it's just hand eye and it's just using what uh, athleticism you have where you train. So I just thought that's a bit of fun. There you go. How many of you have swung a baseball bat before? How many have told you that your baseball swing doesn't work in golf? <laughs> the reality is, baseball swing. A baseball swing and a golf swing are duplicates. The only difference is you hit a baseball here, where's a golf ball? It's back here and down there. So all basically golf is is a low outside pitch in baseball where the ball's further down. But the timing, the hand-eye coordination and everything, how your hands work is exactly the same. That's how I started. I was a good baseball player. So I came to golf, they put the ball down there, I just picked the bat up, I picked the golf club up, and I turned back and I just hit a low outside pitch and I just killed it. And they're going, wow, you got a nice swing. God, you hit it so good. How's your swing plane? What are you working on? And I went, what? I'm just hitting the ball. Well, yeah, but I noticed at the top when you changed, I noticed that your bat, that your club does this. I go, really? <laughs> Great. La, 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 la. Well, no, no. Well, I was pretty good at that for a while. So most of you too, what we'd like you, what I would like you to tune into, is the first thing I would do if you had a lesson. I'd say, what sport did you play growing up, if anything? What was your best sport? Okay. Well, let me see you swing a baseball bat, or let me see you hit a serve in tennis. Because when you start looking at those sports, how many of you play tennis? Okay, in tennis. When they teach you to serve, most teachers teach you either off your knees or with no body action. What are they teaching you? This, this. And we'll get into this in a minute. This little lever system right here, I don't know what the exact number is, but this is very, very high. This is probably your, for sure your biggest speed producer in the golf swing. This thing right here. 
Most of you don't play golf this way. Here's how you play golf. Tension. Shoulders are tight. Pull your chest. <laughs> you look uncomfortable. <laughs> you don't do this. This is why tour players look like they go, Phew! and you go, how the heck do they hit it that far? It's the same with tennis. Phew! You watch somebody who serves it well, you know, it doesn't, you don't see a lot of effort, but there's a tremendous amount of speed. It's this lever system. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Whatever else. What else? What else? <laughs> That's it. What else? Can show that in the shots? Sure. This is the easiest way to show it. <laughs> uh being a struggling golf pro, you learn how to make money and gamble a lot of different ways. <laughs> so, I'm going to play out of a chair today. So when I'm sitting here, what do I have access to? Remember we said the lever and this lever? Well, this lever here in tennis is now going to become this lever in golf. It's the same lever. With that lever system... <laughs> now... No, 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 no. Now, here's what you have to understand. Every time I show that, people go, oh my God, that went further than I can hit it if I kill it. What you better figure out is what do I know to do that that you don't know? Because if I can do that, if you can do that, you can play golf and hit it a long ways at a high level for a long time. That's, so somebody says, well, Mike, your freaking arms are so strong. <laughs> Your hands, look at those hands. Okay, how about I just hold on to it with two fingers? I guarantee you, your hands are as strong as my two fingers. It's not about strength. What did I just allow to happen there? What's this doing? It's moving. I'm playing this way, you're playing this way. So question, how important is weight shift in a golf swing? Depends. On. Depends. That sounds, you just watch the elections. I mean, it's political. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yes or a no. No, it's not, because I just had a lesson with Pam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, e <laughs> that's even a better political move. <laughs> Well, Amy? yeah, it's, it's their fault. Amy. It's the, it's the Amy, other team's shirking. fault. <laughs> okay, you hear this all the time. This is why, this is a big reason why I teach and have been for a long time. Most of you have the talent to be good, but you got really bad tasks in your head. Your brain is a taskmaster. You give it a task, it eliminates anything and everything not relevant to the task. So the key is, what are the key tasks? Most of you here, weight, shift your weight. Okay, so if weight shift's important, which foot would you like me to stand on, my right or my left? Right. Right foot. <laughs> right foot, so I'm going to stand on my right foot. So me, left. <laughs> my point is, if weight shift were a big deal, <clears throat> when I stand on one foot, then I couldn't hit it very far. Hold your knees. <laughs> Hold it with my knees? <laughs> no. Hit on your knees. <laughs> That's the same as out of the chair. <laughs> Whoops, I, sorry. Miss hit one. <laughs> I was a little afraid of Pam's bag there, but whatever, I'm good. Okay, here's another big one. Here's another big one relative to swing and what you practice. How many of you think clearing your hips is a big deal? What is clearing your hips? Turn your hips. Okay, okay. All right, from here, I'm going to have one hell of a time clearing my hips. 
Okay, so if, if, if my hips are a big deal, then how far is this going to go? <laughs> my hips didn't even move. I guess I'll take my legs. <laughs> <laughs> no, now. Just for the record, we were doing short games. So. <laughs> no. I don't no, know. no. No, here's what we're going to Amy thought we were doing, but that No, here's where we're going to go with this. Your hips are important. Your body has to move and rotate to maximize what you're doing. But when you put your body in a priority list and you don't have this, then it doesn't work. Yes, this moves. Yeah, my hips turn. There's a lot of things I'm doing. But this becomes the most important speed producer. So that's I'm just making reference to we got to get you to understand most of you are way strong enough. You just don't know how to create speed. And when somebody says swing faster, what happens, Pam? Nothing good. They try to swing harder. That's right. It just causes arms to take over, and that's never usually a good thing. It causes tension. Yeah. So you basically think that speed is a function of effort. Really, speed is a function of less effort. The faster you can make something go with less and less effort, the better you are. Sandy Colfax, any of you know that name? Yeah. I was a pitcher in high school and up to college, and that's what I wanted to do. And I met him when I was young. My dad played professional baseball, and, and my uncle was in the Dodger organization. And Sandy Colfax said that the number one thing in his pitching that changed his life was when he learned how to throw the ball really fast, softly. So as if all of a sudden he felt himself <clears throat> tighten, he knew he was off. So speed is a, is a function of this. If, if you want to know how much tension you need in your arms and shoulders to hit a golf ball, just throw a ball. How much tension is in this? Well, really not much. So you can see how it plays into warming up. Heaviest club in your bag. It'll hinge, it's out, cause an outcome, and we're too stuck in the middle. So this is the heaviest club, so it falls with gravity, and there's your nice free wrists. All my joints are hinging. See, and when Pam does that, keep doing that, this is awesome. I mean, you're looking at a 15-year LPGA tour. I mean, we've played a lot of golf. She's played a lot more competitive golf than I have. When you've played that much golf and you've been around the best players in the world, you start to, just by virtue of you're there, you watch, you observe, you start to see things. And go ahead and do that again. Now when she does that, watch as the club comes down, how her body moves in harmony with her arms. You don't see any real jumpiness. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, so I, it's, it's like watching a dance. When you watch a good player swing, the club's doing a waltz and their body's doing a waltz. When we watch you folks, the club's doing a waltz, your body's doing a cha-cha. <laughs> you know, and you're going, oh, what is that? What was that flinch? You know, so, so when, you, when you watch good players, watch the smoothness and how the motions blend. Because it's a blend of hands, wrists, and arms, and your body. It's not one over the other. But when you start out, you better get control of the club with your hands wrists and arms and have some idea how to control the face which is why most of you should start which I start I think Pam probably does with short game chipping and putting that's where I start every day very few tour players come straight to the range they chip and putt they putt chip a little bit come here hit some pitch shots so they're they're building their skills Nicholas made a comment to me one day he says Mike golf is a game of motion and adjustments Emotion and adjustments. So how do you learn to do adjustments? We'll talk about that in a minute. And he says, every day is an opportunity for me to reinvent myself. So he says, I walk out to the range every single morning assuming I know nothing. Now, Jack was a pretty good player. So if he's going out there starting over every day, it, you might consider it. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> uh, and then one of the things, uh, of course, talking about fundamentals, when I start with a brand new golfer, we're putting, okay? Smallest motion, okay? Easiest way to hold the club because the front is flat of the club. 
So it's easy to know where to put your thumbs, you know. Learning to hold the golf club that's not flat is challenging at best, but that's the, the number one thing you need to be able to do. Well, and it should be natural. There's a, all sorts of ideas about it, but I believe it's just natural. You, you want to play golf, swing a club to suit you. Find a swing you like, because then you go out and be able to replicate it. And it's to suit your body and how you're, speaking about the grip, how your arms hang. Okay? And then learning to hold the club, I'm curious what Mike thinks on that. Well, do that again, what you just did there. Because I, when I started to understand this, I didn't know anything. And people got me into doing things that didn't fit who I was physically. So when Pam lets her arms hang, and especially when she bends and lets her arm just hang in front of her, you see the angle of this wrist? Her, the back of her left hand's not facing the target, is it? Okay, so if you take this grip and your arm wants to hang like that, and you take this grip, here's what's gonna happen. You swing back. <laughs> At some point in time, your joints are gonna say, you know, I don't really like the way this feels. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna line the joints up, which now you've opened the face. And somebody says, you're taking the club way too much from the inside. Mm -hmm. So then you, what do you have to do? Because this went this way, then you have to go this way to try to get back onto it. <laughs> Everybody ever seen that swing? <laughs> okay, so what's happened in golf in the last 10 years, 15 years on tour? One of the biggest changes in the game is this hand has gotten stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Why? The biomechanics people understand joint alignments. And this hand is becoming more of a chopper than a rotator. Mm. All right, so what Pam just said about get your hand on there correctly, if we could get all of you, and I've watched her do grip, she does a great job with grip. If your hands aren't on the club correctly, now I can put my hands on any position you want me to put them on. I could put them like this, like this, like that, like that, and you could say hit a hook and I can make the ball do whatever you want it to do. I've trained my hands, so as soon as you put my hands on, then I'm gonna figure out what my hands have to do to make the face work. Most of you don't have a lifetime to figure those differences out. So you want a grip that once you swing the club, that when the weight of the club straightens your, this arm, the face squares itself. If you have to square the face, you're gonna to have to do it this way, mm -hmm. which is if this arm has to twist, what's this shoulder gonna do? Over the top. Do you know how hard it is to learn how to keep this shoulder back, stay here and rotate this arm and not have this shoulder come out? It only took me two and a half years, a couple hundred thousand balls. Mm -hmm. Because when I started, I had a grip where my hands worked this way and my right arm was this. It was a pusher and a thrower. It wasn't a twist. Now you can play this way if you want to try, but most of you don't have a lifetime to figure that one out. It took me a career to get decent at it. You know, so what Pam does, and I've watched her do grip, if nothing else, have us look at your grip and make sure your hands are on the club in a manner that fits you where you have a chance for those levers to work. Would you say people get the club in their left hand too much in the palm or too much in their fingers? Palm. Definitely palm. Did you hear what mm -hmm. she said? Sorry, definitely palm. Put it in your so, hand. Mm. They get it. You get it where it's this way. Like a bat. It's up in the palm of your hand. We're playing down here in our fingers. Mm -hmm. The more it's in your fingers, the more lever you have, and the more speed you can generate. It goes in the palm of your hand, you can't use your wrist much. So where do you hold a putter? In the palm of your hands. Why? You don't want a lot of this. Okay, so getting your grip on there correctly, if you don't, then everything you do from there is a compensation for the grip. Yeah, everything flows off your setup, and that's the number one thing in your setup when you're learning the game and in fundamentals that you want to master and own it so you can replicate it, do it with your eyes closed, <laughs> so you can just feel your hands are in the right spot. So. If you want to have some idea where, have you ever noticed tour players are always standing like this. It's kind of cool. <laughs> well, that's, why, that's why I did it. What, what's going on when I do this? Where does the club end up? So when I take my grip, you ever watch them do this? They walk up to the ball and they toss the club up in the air and they get their grip and then they do that. What does this do when the club head goes above my hands? Where did the club just go? Into my fingers. Here's 
<laughs> I'm going, no chance. If you just if you just feel that, you see where the club is? If you ever wear a glove out up in here, anybody ever do that? I could wear this glove for six months. Sure you do. No, no, because if you do, then we found initially, we found something, we got to figure out why, because I could wear this glove for six months, it wouldn't wear that spot out. Now, there's two reasons that that spot gets worn out, okay? One, you could, be, you could have your grip right, but you're holding, you see this little grip cap thing here? You're holding it like this. It's inside your hand. There, there's hardly any players. They're all like this. See, that blue thing doesn't touch my hand. You see where my hand is? So my little finger's about an inch to, to an inch and a half from this. If you hold it like that, there is no way when you swing that is going to tear your glove up. There's very few players that hold it there. And the ones that do are absolute bombers and they're trying to stabilize their wrists a little bit. So if you're hitting it too far, that's a good way to slow it down. So one is that touches, the other is instead of the club being here in your fingers, it's there in the palm of your hand, even though your fingers are touching it. See? Here's, here's my, my grip sits like this. See where my hands are? And what happens? This folds in and over and that folds in there. So where's the club sitting? In my fingers. Most of you, okay, what can't happen? Your wrist won't work. So now you're trying to hit it, and what happens? Freaking shoulders get more active. So we got to get your grips decent. Anything else? <laughs> Should we ask our question? How any questions? Yeah, any questions? Grip thing again here. So when you're doing your right, your, your draws, fades, whatever, are you changing your grip or uh -huh. are you changing well, your, your setup as far as how you swing and the very good question. The question was, when I'm hitting those shots, hook, fade, high, low, am I changing my grip or the ball position? I could, but those ones that I was hitting, obviously I didn't because I didn't know what she was going to call. Now here's the reality. For me, I hit a draw. I hit draws. I, liked, I like to feel what my hands are doing with the face to hit a draw under pressure. When I hit a fade, I set the club face open and I just make my normal swing. So because I set the face a little open, the ball fades a little. I don't change anything. So you have to play around with what's the best for you. But initially, initially, before you start moving the ball around, you have to know how to put your hands on there and control whether that face is there, 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 or there when it runs into the ball. Now here's what's frightening. You hit a ball and it goes out there and it curves 30 yards offline. If this hits it straight, okay, I'm going to show you how much that face has to be open to hit it 30 yards off to the right. About that much. <laughs> oh, you've been at track, man, like three or four degrees. That's, that's two second tick on a watch face. So when you guys are hitting shots and they're, they're a little offline, you're going, oh my God, I can't believe how bad that is. <laughs> you're a degree away from good at high speeds. You know, give yourselves a break. You only have to be good enough to score well. So if you're hitting, and it's about predictability of the club face. The most experienced players, the best players in the world, are hitting close to the sweet spot. Everybody else has a variety of marks on their clubs. <laughs> a variety of ideas. <laughs> so when you're on the golf course, you know, how predictable are your shots? And uh, you just kind of work, well, we're going to get into practice now, but... Uh, it's what to work on to gain that predictability. And we only have to be good enough in what Mike was saying there. Again, if I work with a newer golfer, it's like, okay, what's my target? Okay, it's the golf course, right? <laughs> <laughs> then it's the fairway, then it's the green, and eventually it's the flag. So, When you're warming up to play, to compete, you want to you get warmed up, hit the ball, see what your swing will give you. What shots can you hit? I, I do this all the time. I go out and play for years. I've done this with members. They come up and say, Mike, I, oh man, I'd really like to break 90, but I just can't. I don't hit it well enough. I say, well, really? So I watch them on the range, and here's the typical, here they are on the range. 
<laughs> and they go, big slice, big slice. And I say, okay. So I do, I go out and play with them. I don't hit it any farther than they do, and I hit the same shot they do. It's just, they're aiming down the middle of the fairway, and that big slice goes where? Out in the rough. So I just aim over here and make the same swing, and what does it do? It slices right back in the middle of the fairway. And then I go do that again, and I shoot around even par, and, and, I'll, and, I'll, and they'll go, well, yeah, but I don't want to do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, if you're going out to play and you want to win, then you have to take the game you have and play it. That's what Pam was making a point about. When you come out here, you better be making a clear dis distinction. Am I here to practice or am I getting ready to go play? Now you can have some things that you want to warm up your swing with and some fundamentals, but you better find a shot with this that you can kind of hit when you hit it. So what's it going to do? And it doesn't matter which way it goes. If you can make it go one way, you can play. Golf course gets really big. Because if you slice everything, you just aim down the left side and slice it, the fairway's 60 yards wide. And then I watch people slice it, and they get on the first tee and aim down the middle of the fairway. I go, it used to drive me crazy when I played pro-ams. I go, where are you going? I'm down the middle. I said, well, you didn't hit one straight one on the range. <laughs> this one's going to go straight. I go, <laughs> he ain't counting on the first few holes. Okay, so warming up is taking a, a, a process and finding what you have that day. Chip shots, what chip shots can you hit? You know, the, what kind of full swing, what shots, where do you need to put the ball? You know, within a con, I'm gonna show you something here in a minute. And so then you better be constant with what you're constant with. Because if the ball's moving around and you're changing aim, your swing doesn't work the same twice. You know, and I watch people line up out here and hit balls and I'm going, Man, they must be really good because they don't put the ball in the same place twice or aim the same way twice. So that means your swing has to change every time you swing to make the ball go to the target. And yet every one of you hit and you look up and watch where the ball goes. I've had people say, well, I'm not focusing on where the ball goes. Well, why do you keep looking up? <laughs> Obviously, that has some impact. No, I don't care where it goes. Okay, fine, whatever. So you got to come out with a clear mindset. Am I here to practice or am I warming up to play? And the golf course cannot become 18 separate practice sessions. <laughs> if you're trying to shoot a score. Now Pam, when you were playing, did you spend time on the golf course working on your swing? No. Not when no. you're competing. What about just going out by yourself and hitting shots on the golf course to try shots that you did? No. You did all, so you just played? Yeah, I was just playing shots. But I would play, I would replicate the shots here. It's rehearsal, that's what we're all doing, and reps. And so I was, we were gonna ask a question, like how many rounds of golf are we playing in our group? You know, and how many times do we go over here? And then what do you do when you come over here? You know, that's kind of the, the theme of, of tonight. You know, so if you're playing every day, you are on tour, right? If you're playing four days in a row, you might as well be on the tour. Right now, those guys and girls can't put. Well, excuse me, the winners can put four rounds together. Beg their pardon. Everybody else is ooh up a seventy-five, a sixty-eight, a seventy-two, and then whatever. Right. So if you're constantly playing without putting a little bit of time in to get some reps, to train whatever it is you're training, and maybe it is just to try to learn to fade the ball, to play a shot around an imaginary tree or something or a cactus. I guess. So, but I definitely was on the course playing shots. Playing here, I was rehearsing to go up there. It's like being an actor. You, you know your lines. You're not going to go in the middle of the, you know, on the stage and try and change. Not know your lines. You know, you can improvise, which is what golf is. It's improvisation. Kathleen. So when you're replicating, is it replicating just distance with a different club? So your is your shot kind of the same? I mean, I know a wood's different than an iron, but is it, do you have like a finite number of shots that you're playing? You mean here? Mm -hmm. Warming up? Well, or I mean, even on the course, right? Except like you're, you're saying it's about replicating something that you, 
that's natural to you or that you can do. Mm -hmm. Like the example of you hit a slice every time, well then why are you aiming for the middle, right? Right. So if you hit your irons, you know what your irons do. Are you replicating the same shot and just getting more distance with different clubs? Well, we would know our distances. So, yes. so each club has a, a, a specific distance under flat calm conditions. And then you just change clubs based on what you want the ball to do. Right. Yeah. And if it's just a stock shot, 100-yard shot, everyone's got a 100-yard club. And if you don't, well, that's all right. You just got to figure out how to get the ball in the air and, you know, all that stuff. So there's two spectrums of golf. There's new golfers and the pros. Yeah. Right? The best in the world. And then there's learning to play golf. Golf is played in the middle somewhere. Okay? We talk a lot about the best players because, yeah, they're the best players. But most golf is played in the middle. Brand new golf. Great. That's fun. Let's get into it. And then there's the, the elite players, which for expectations is a whole other thing. But, you know, like Mike said earlier, and I was saying, sometimes the fairway is, is the, the golf course is the target, and then the green, then the hole. For the pros with an 8-iron, I mean, was it 20 feet? I mean, yeah. they're not even close to the hole, really, on average. On the golf course, not here. We could park them here, and they wouldn't miss. But once you get out there with a pencil and a, you know, it's different. So... The other thing, most of you, when you play, and I used to do, I did this at Superstition. Every place I've been, I used to do it with Corporate America. First of all, you don't have to hit the ball that far to be pretty good. I would go out, in fact, let's say from 6,200 yards, how far do you have to you think you have to hit it to be a single digit handicap? To hit your tee shots. To be single digit. 220. Okay. So I spent, I about pulled my hair out in corporate America when I came out of playing and I started working for Nicholas, for Jack, running his schools, and I'd play with corporate America. And these guys, I mean, it was a nightmare. We, we played one round at the Inn at Spanish Bay. A guy, two guys, lost 67 golf balls in 18 <laughs> holes. So I had to play with them the next day, and I'm thinking, okay, I don't know that I can handle this. So we show up the next day at, at Spyglass, which is harder and I'm thinking, this could be my last day teaching. So I walk out there on the first tee at Spyglass, which is the tees they're playing it from is 560, and I take my 7-iron, and I hit a ball about 150 yards middle of, right in the middle of the fairway, and they go, where's your driver? I only had my 7-iron, my wedge, and my putter. And they go, where's your driver? I go, well, I'm just going to hold these. I'm going to play with these. You guys do what you want to do. So I let him play three holes, and we get to the fourth tee, and I go, can I ask you something? I asked the one guy, I said, what's your score to this point? And he goes, well, let's see, that's, that's, I've lost seven balls. <laughs> I said, what's my score? I was one over. I'll break 80 on any golf course. I've shot 72, I, I'll break 80, never hitting a ball any further than I hit that one at 6,200 yards. But I don't lose the ball, and my short game's pretty good. So most of you, if you just went out and you played a game where you say, okay, I got one ball, when I lose the ball, I have to come in. Most of you on the first tee may not take your drivers out. Because if you lose the ball, you're done. You go right straight to the bar. Okay, so it's about preserving the ball. <laughs> so we would do that with people, and as soon as they started not trying to hit it far but control the ball their scores came down. Now, when we took the flags out of the greens where they couldn't see a flag, where do you aim? So they'd come in and they'd say, oh my God, I hit more greens today than I ever hit. <laughs> Why? You're not good enough to aim at the flag. I mean, me at my, I mean, if from a hundred and maybe 60 yards, 70 maybe, depending on where the pin is and what the miss is, I'm probably aiming at it. You get me outside 170 yards. No, no, I'm green's good. Okay, most of you, I say, where are you aiming? The flag. I go, why? <laughs> well, I'm going to try to hit it. No, no, how about just try to get it on the middle of green? Or how about we do this? Where's the best place to miss it? So you got a next shot instead of in the canyon. Why don't we hit it over there? So 
a lot of the reason that you don't play very well is you don't manage your own games very well and your concept of distance is skewed. What do they keep feeding you? The game is all about distance. The farther you hit it, the better player you're going to be. On tour, that works. Maybe. The average level, it doesn't work. You just hit, hitting it farther, you just hit it farther out of play. It, it doesn't make you much better. So, I was going to grab those two guys, but they, I could see they were already bored. <laughs> uh, like, you're talking about shaping shots. Yeah. You know, you're, you're what, if, what, what happens when you're, you know, I've got a, my 8 iron 125 yards, I hit my 7 iron 155, but i got to shoot a 140 yard shot. Yeah. Like, how, how do you, like, take a little off? How, how do you do that? Because whenever I try that, I screw up my shot. Well, again, the question is, if you've got a yardage that doesn't match your club, do you swing harder, do you take more club and swing easier? See, I, for me personally, I would take a little bit more club and choke it down and make the same swing I always made. So I tried to keep my same tempo and the same swing as much as I possibly could. Just shorten the club, and so it shortens the arc, which shortens how far the ball goes. You know, that was the best way. Now, there's obviously, I mean, I've had shots, seriously, where I get up, and I'm sure Pam would agree with this. I, there's times when I've gotten up to shots and I got to hit it at that blue flag and I'm choking my freaking guts out. And I know if I make a normal swing, this ball could go anywhere. So what most players learn is the more nervous you are and the worse your swing goes, what they do is they take the ball flight and they, they, they bring the ball flight down. It's a punch they, shot. They bring it down. They... they they, de they don't try to hit it away, they knock it down because if I hit it low, it's not going to get away from me. You know, so I've learned playing for my living when I'm choking and anybody who tells you you're not going to get nervous is, a, is ridiculous. You should be nervous. On when the you get nervous, which is all, which all nervous is really, it's not nervous, it's adrenaline. Mm -hmm. You should go, this is cool. Man, yeah. my heart's in my throat, I can hardly swallow. <laughs> if you don't like that feeling, for sure don't compete in anything <laughs> because that's what that's what allows you to do things you can't normally do you just have to read yourself so so you again you have to come out here and practice hitting different shots and figure out if you are feeling that what shot can I hit that I can keep in play you know it's not just make a good swing I can't tell you how many times these tour players, they're not just standing there going, no, 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 go to your quiet place and just swing, and everything's wonderful. I asked Nicholas, what percentage of time does your golf, did you, in your career, what percentage of time did your swing feel like it was good? Yeah, maybe 40% of the time. I go, okay. So, but he says 80% it was manageable. So, Jack Nicholas. His swing only felt really good 40% of the time. So how do, they, how do they play when it's not feeling good? He said manageable. What does that mean? He knew how to take uncomfortable, manage it where he could still shoot a score. So if you're looking for this magic bullet where you stand there and the, you know, the bluebirds start to sing and the clouds are out and it's this, ha, 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 it, it's probably not going to happen. So you got to learn to play when it doesn't feel comfortable. And if it does happen, you don't realize it until later anyway. Pretty much. <laughs> um, pra I want to get into this practice station. You know, it's really interesting how important aim is and what your eyes see as aim. Because if I t golf is really interesting because golf, if I'm shooting a gun... You're going, please don't pull the trigger. But see, golf isn't played like this or like this. Here's how golf's played. It's like holding a gun out here. So what was your name? Susan. So Susan, I'm going to shoot you, right? So I'm going to put the gun out here. <laughs> this looks, you'd go pull the freaking trigger because what's your name? Yeah, I'm get ready. One of you two is going down. And Susan's saying pull the trigger. Okay, so here's what you have to learn to do with golf. You have to learn to see a picture to make the club work, to make the ball go at the target that doesn't look right. Why? Your eyes aren't sitting here. Your eyes are way inside the line, okay? 
Now, you've got these sticks up there for aim. Here's the target line. My eyes are this side of that line. They're not right directly over the line. So what we've got here, you see this little target thing here? Would you agree if that ball goes over that yellow stick and goes over this, it's going to go with that black flag? Okay, now this would be really good for all of you to see this. We may not get, but here's what we're going to start doing. We're going to put this up. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest reasons next to grip that most of you come over the top because you're seeing a picture that's incorrect. And you stand there and you're looking at what you think, which that's really not the target, it's the destination. But you're looking at where you want the ball to go and you're drawing a line back and you're making the club swing on the line you think's gonna go there. It's a bad line. It's a terrible line. And if you don't learn to see the correct line, you will never swing and, and state and hit the ball from the inside, which everybody who's any good does. So, come on up here. Now, you're not going to hit this ball because I'm going to get out in front of it, okay? <laughs> the only reason I say that is I've had, I had one, two people pull the trigger on it when I was standing out here. <laughs> now, luckily, they all come over the top, so I was safe. <laughs> now, here's my question. If that ball went through that, that red thing, would it go with that black flag, or does it look like it would go way to the right? Yeah, it looks like it would go to the right. Tell me when, if that ball hits this one, it'll go with that black flag. Right there. Okay. All right, go back behind that and look where that ball is going to go if you hit it where you just thought you were supposed to. <laughs> That's called over the top. So most of you, we're going to start setting this up because when I hit a golf ball, I've gotten so used to seeing this picture that I'm okay starting the ball what looks to be through that, what looks like it's going to hit it way to the right of the blue flag. That's what it looks like from here. If I swing what looks right, I'd hit every shot, I'd hit it over there somewhere. Because that's what the path looks like it's supposed to be. So you slice left. Yeah, so most of you, yes, you pull it over. I come over the... Slice right. <laughs> well, that's face. <fakes. laughs> that's close. How do you line up if you slice under So, yeah, so where are you getting it? From where are you getting a you ever notice? Where does everybody start? They start back here. And they see the ball and they most of them pick a spot or something in front of the ball. And they know if the ball goes over that spot, it's going to go at the target. And then they walk up to the ball and they set up, they see that and they set up relative to that and then they look at their target. Some look, but they know the picture. You, until you see this personally, you're going to have a hard time understanding it. Most of you will look at it and you'll say, oh my goodness, if I start the ball over that red thing there, I would miss that black fag by 40, 50 yards to the right. No, you won't. That red stake's right in line with it, which is why most people take the club back and then do this. Because you're trying to make the club come into the ball on a path to make the ball start what you think is at the target. And when you do that, the face is also open, so what do you hit? <laughs> Big slice. It's a subconscious thing. The brain's trying to help us, so. Yeah. yeah, it's subconscious. See, your brain is designed, it's called fight or flight. It's trying to protect you from harm. So when you get up there and you start to make a swing and you start down relative to where you think the target is, your subconscious is gonna go, bum, bum, abort mission, Here's where we got to go. And then somebody says, you came over the top. Now, the only reason I got pretty good at this, I used to practice on a little core that we didn't have a range. And I'd, in this, I'd stand up in this fairway and there were some trees that hung over and a fairway went down. There was a little practice screen. And I used to set the balls down and I'd line them up and I'd look and I'd get here and it looked like if I miss the trees, it's going to go way to the right of that flag. And I'd go back and I'd, no, that's perfect. So I learned to trust a picture that looked like I was starting it to the right and hooking it back into the target. Then my dad came out one day to watch me practice. He goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just hitting with that flag. 
He says, okay. So I hit a couple. I said, yeah, see, I'm hitting it, and it's starting about 10 yards right of the flag, and it's hooking back into the flag. My dad's sitting there going, the ball's not curving at all. I go, yes, it is. He goes, Mike, I can see curve. I mean, he's a pitcher in major leagues. He goes, the ball's not curving. He says, you hit it. It starts right at the flag and stays at the flag. I said, no, it's starting way out to the right and doing this. That's because I was standing here. So my perception of what the path was and what the curve was was totally different than his. One of the reasons you all struggle with golf, everything we do with golf is about what? What you see when you watch me, okay? The problem is you have to then get up here and look at it from this angle and figure out what's this supposed to look like from here to make it look like what I see from that angle. See, your world right there and my world here aren't even close to the same. That's why this kind of thing helps you dramatically because you start to look and you go, oh, well, there's where the ball needs to be. That's what this stick's about. So if I'm constant with where I put the ball, I'm constant with where I aim, and I start seeing where I'm supposed to start the ball, all of a sudden, you start starting the ball, eh, start a little much to, too much to the right. So then you change. So how do you pare that down to what do you do on the golf course? You have to learn to see the picture and you have to be structured enough with how you set up to it. Pam, do you have a routine on the golf course? Mm -hmm. I do. What do you do? I, I'm going to hit my six. Oh, that's my four. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> so I start back here. Pardon my back. But here we go. I'm picking a spot here or here or here, depending on the curvature I want to put on the ball. So close. Yeah. Okay. Right here. Because I think I've got a pretty good chance of aiming this at something here. Even though it is proven, again, the brain's amazing, you can look out there and get a result. But I, I aim the center of my face at a little spot. Okay. I'm back here. Like Mike said, the pros are back here. They don't hit any shots by accident. It's all planned. There's no randomness. So say I'm going at the blue. This could be interesting, at first shot. Um, I, I come in. Now, I set the club first. I could be standing on my head right now. It doesn't matter. I'm setting the club here. Then I set my body to the club. That's it. Did Taking you hear what she... Did you, this is so big. What did she just say? I get a picture... I get a spot. What did she set in first? The club. Club. Then she set her body up to fit club. the club. To the club. You hit the... It's my, I, this drives me freaking nuts. When I see people doing this, I go, when's the last time you've seen a tour player doing this? First of all, you don't hit it with this. And when people do that, I go, what are you doing? I'm aiming my hips. I go, really? Good for you. It's going to change. So what she said is critical, that, that process. Get a line that you're going to hit it on, and the first thing, you watch all these players, what's the first thing they do? They set the club in. Then they set their body up to fit the club. You want to know how to get set up correctly all the time. You set up to the club. You don't set the club up to you. And I watch too many people out there, they, they bring a ball in, and then they go, I'm going... Done. I mean, if you're going to kick the ball at the target, that would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, behind, get your line, set your club, then figure out your body. Yeah. And a key component for me, and anyone who's worked with me on knows and has heard, heard this, I don't take a practice swing by the ball. Right? Right. I'm walking to the target. Everything I'm doing... Yes, everything I'm doing here is about getting the ball over there. If you come here and do a practice swing, well, now what? You're going to go back here? No, of course not. Right? So you're just going to do a practice swing or two or six. By the way, stop that. <laughs> right? Okay, here we go. So now I'm probably going way. If you're right eye dominant, you're going over there. And if you're left, you're probably going over there. So to avoid all that, <laughs> okay, experiment with this. What we're sharing, what we're going to be sharing these events is to offer ideas and you just experiment find out what works for you but this is good stuff you know it's like and it's a little bit commonsensical it's a little bit of logic 
aim the club where you want the ball to start. And that's almost the end of the story from the standpoint of what Mike was saying earlier. If you've got hand-eye coordination or you can train that, like he did, he hit the ball like that. <laughs> okay. So if I hit this, I'm going to, let's see what happens. Wish me luck. Right. So I am club face going there. My toe line is parallel, but it's an after fact. Now I'll just hit it towards the blue, I hope. Well, not a very good hit. But it's all right. Good enough. <laughs> good enough. enough. Right? Close enough. Close enough. Thank you, Kathleen. So, yes, there's a routine. It's not by accident. Always sound serious when we're talking about, oh, you got to do this. No, you don't got to do anything. So, Pam. So, you, Bob. Can you train better hand-eye coordination, like you just said? No question. Yeah, you just have to come and hit balls. No question. Yeah. The, the, here's where the tour lives. Here's where good players live relative to you. I'm sure you've probably thought this. Here's a tour player. They stand back here. And they go, okay, like Pam said, I'm going to go with that blue flag and I'm going to hit. <laughs> Say we're going to hit a little draw. But that's the picture I see. Then they stand back here and if they're going to make a practice swing, they stand here and you'll see them making little practice swings to get a feel for what they want the club to do to hit the shot. And as soon as they get a feel for what they want to do, boom, now I'm done. So now when I walk up to the ball, all I'm going to do is walk up, aim the club, set up, and I'm going to try to duplicate the feel of the swing. I'm not standing over the ball going, okay, now, Make sure you keep your head still, keep your hip out of the way, keep your left arm straight, make sure you don't sway on it. No, no, see, I programmed that back here. So I already know what I'm gonna do. Then I walk up there and you allow yourself to duplicate the feel. You don't try to recreate the swing, you duplicate what you've already programmed. Amateurs get over the ball and then they go, okay, take a deep breath, keep the club low to the ground, make sure you clear it. Are, are you kidding? Well, the swing's only a second and a half, right? Like... You can do that back here, but you better not be over the ball trying to figure out what am I going to do now. It's already gone. You've already hit it. And then you, then, you, then you evaluate what you did. The best players in the world, when you watch them, they stand behind the ball, they get a picture, They'll make a practice swing. Some do, some don't. Some stand back here. Jason Day stands here and he closes his eyes. So he's standing there and he's doing this with the club. And then all of a sudden he'll do this. And he'll put the club up and he'll go. What's he doing? Visualize. He's visualizing and actually feeling himself hit the shot. And as soon as he feels it, then he walks up and he aims it. And then he makes a swing. Now they watch it. Now, if they hit it well, they'll stand there and they'll replay it. They'll replay, what did the swing feel like? What did the ball feel like coming off the face? They're replicating and duplicating it because they liked it. If they miss hit it, I watched Pam, she hit that one a little thin. I could see she wanted to turn around and make a practice swing and fix. Most of you don't fix or enjoy. If yeah. you hit it good, you go, well, I should do that. <laughs> and if you hit it bad, you go, you get all, and then you go to the next shot, you get to the next shot, and now what are you going to do? Fix what you did on the last one. No, see, they're already done. They, they've, they picture, they produce, they evaluate, either like it or fix, and go to the next shot. That's how you play golf. If you're over the ball trying to fix or produce, you are in trouble. Because now you got too many thoughts, and the swing happens too fast. And one of the things we see all the time is if you hit one you don't like, or go golfers hit, hit uh, shots you don't like, it's like, oh, God, what did I do there? Instead of, where'd the ball go? And we're already in the bunker if the ball's in the bunker, planning the next shot. So it's you want to play forward, not back. Don't drag the bad shots with you. Leave them where they happen. I'll give you one, probably the best playing lesson I ever had relative to getting the most out of your game. The teacher that I had, his name is Joe Nichols, he shows up one day and we're working on whatever, and so we get on the range, 
He goes, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to go out and play nine holes, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll bet you where I put you, you cannot break 40. I'm going, well, you're going to put me in the trees? No, no, no. I'm not going to put you in the trees, but I'll give you some tough shots. I'm not going to necessarily put you in the middle of the fairway, and you're not going to hit many greens. I said, okay. <laughs> so we go out on the first hole. I pipe it down the middle of the fairway. We drive down. He picks my ball up, brings it back about 30 yards, puts it on a side hill in the rough behind a tree. And I'm going, okay, well, let's see. What have I got here? Well, I could take a three wood and hit a little cut and run it up by the front. So I hit it up there on the front of the green, chip it on, make par. I'm going, uh -huh. <laughs> let's see. We go to the next hole. I hit it in the middle of the green, par three. He walks up, grabs my ball, throws it over the back of the green. So now the pin's in the back. I'm over the green, downhill, uphill, lies sloping away. And I'm sitting, oh, geez, okay, well, I'm going to bump it into the hill. So I bump it into the hill, and it trickles about 20 feet by, and, poof, and I make the putt. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you can't put me in a place I can't make. So we get to nine. I've got about a six-footer to shoot even par. And he goes, i got a question for you. I go, what's that? He says, before I pay you, he says, what would you have shot if you would have hit the shots in the positions I put you off the tee? I'm, well, that was ridiculous. I'd have quit after three holes. He goes, there's your problem. Because you take it personal where the ball goes. See, what he did to me, he put me in places I would never hit it. But see, I didn't hit it there. So now what was it? It was a challenge. And I'm thinking, I'll show you. I'll get it under me. That's how, that's how Seve Ballesteros, Tiger Woods, that's how all these guys play golf. Where it goes has no implication on you as a person. Zero. It's just a shot. I mean, Jack has selective memory. The minute he hits it, if it goes out of bounds. Never happened. All right, okay, well, give me another ball. <laughs> you go, Jack, you hit it out of bounds on 17. What do you mean? Half the time he doesn't even remember it. And if you try to get him to remember it, he will tattoo you. He, will, he doesn't want to remember bad shots. One more thing, and then I'll let Pam, she can rep. The biggest thing I see, the difference between amateurs and pros, and I, I've done this multiple times. You go to a tour event, tour players are coming off the golf course. They sign their scorecard. So you ask them, whoever, Tiger, Rory, what's the most memorable shot you had out there today? Rory would say, oh man, on 17, I hit this two iron that was just unbelievable. You ask somebody else, I had a bunker shot on four. It was impossible. He says, I hit this shot. Man, it was worth the whole day. They all come up with a good shot. Now, if I did the same thing for the member guest here and people come off the golf course, what's your most memorable shot? Oh, that freaking sixth hole. Every time I play that thing, I top it. Or if I could just not four putt number six half the time. So, so they tend to remember really good a lot and get rid of bad. We tend to live in all of our bad shots. So rather than focusing on what were your good shots, what did they feel like, what did you do, you tend to always register bad, 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 bad. That's not where they live. They have selective memory relative to what they're going to put in their computers. Oh, it's... We're all like, okay, Okay. All right. Any questions? Any more questions? <laughs> I have one. Kathleen. So you guys talk about you can train for that. You can train for that. Are there things you can do to that don't require being here? Like things you can do. Yes. At your mm -hmm. home. Things Lots you can of them. Do mm -hmm. At yeah. night, things you can do that just get your body ready. Well, here's one. We have these on the range. This is my one. It's shorter. Now they're, well, they're not here now, of course. We cleaned the range. But orange whip, right? something like this that's just momentum. And I'm not thinking. Right. I'm just swinging. You can do that in your living room. Yeah. Anywhere you want, yeah. right? You Using a mirror if you're working on or you want to see yourself, uh, yeah. your posture. And now that it's, the weather's nice and we're outside now at happy hour, um, if you've got windows, <laughs> you can use your window. And so there's lots oh, of things. That's great, we can't always be here, but like no. you said, training for any sport. 
Exactly. This mm -hmm. important. When you come out to start your day, what is your, before you pick up a club, what is your, do you, you know, swing some clubs? Do you turn? Do you do anything? For me, I, this is my friend now. <laughs> this, I mean, Have stretching. You her? <laughs> <laughs> Have you named her? No, but you may. <laughs> Here's, Please do. Here's here's one of the things. One of the reasons, and I you know I, it's not relevant, not relevant. One of the reasons I was national teacher of the year in 2011 for the PGA is I basically starting in about the mid 80s was one of the first that really got into the the body and golf and how it fit. And so I knew more about the body than most anybody in golf relative to what it did and didn't do. And one of the things, this is the machine you're going to hit it with. I never get out here. If I'm going to hit a ball, I mean, when I got here today, up in the parking lot, I had a routine I did to loosen up. So I don't use hitting balls as a way to loosen up. Mm -hmm. The first ball I hit, I'm loose enough that I could just turn it back and hit it as hard as I want to hit it. And what's your routine? Well, I can put that up. I can show it on your, your website and do stuff okay. with you. But you've got to do some things for your, your hamstrings and your calves, the bending in your body and your ability to rotate. So you get your body as close to it, its normal potential as you can. Because if you don't and you come out and you've been riding in the car all day or sitting at your desk and you come out here and you go, oh, that feels good. <laughs> <sighs> as opposed to, so function, flexibility, whatever you want to call that, it's critical that you are at your best when you start. If you use swinging of the club to loosen you up, there's a really good chance that you're going to make some big errors because your right hip's a little tight or your shoulder's a little tight and your body starts to conform to, well, my hip's a little tight. Oh, that feels better. Okay, now I'm going to swing. <laughs> so, so I would tell you, you've got to find something that the bending in your body and the twisting where you're loose before you start swinging. And right now the tour players, there is not a tour player, not one, I don't think on any tour, who walks out and starts hitting ball. They've been in the gym for two hours. They've been stretched and all They've been stretched, they've been worked out. Stretching more mm -hmm. than like lifting. Both, yeah. why lift? See lift, if you do bands, that gets blood flow Okay. to the joints, then yeah. you stretch. If you stretch first, that's a train wreck okay. because your muscles aren't loose. So stretching when you're tight, so mm -hmm. you do bands and you get blood flow going, you do some, and then you do a few little stretches and then you start hitting balls. That'd be a great lesson. No, that's, yeah. we'll. They, they understand that. No, that's good. Uh, I, I, wanna, I wanna say something here. I, and if I, if I get a, <clears throat> I, I want to let Pam know how much I appreciate you guys letting me be a part of your facility. This game has been my life. I mean, uh, and to be able to have access and to, to meet you and maybe help you with your games, that's what I'm all about. That's who I am. And Pam and Matt and Fire Rock was, was willing and able to, to help me. I'm going to do a lot that I can do to, to promote your facility and help you out. This is a marvelous game. It's probably the most enjoyable thing I've ever run into. I've spent my whole life trying to figure it out. You're never gonna figure the game out. I've pretty much figured out what a swing is and isn't for most people, but the game is magical because it changes every single day, every shot. Your emotions are different, your body feels different. I mean, that's the part of golf that, it, that enamored me because I could hit it really pretty good, really fast but it was the inconsistencies of the game that enamored me to try to get to where I could get it, to where I could play it consistently, because it changes so much. You know, so anything I can do, I will say on the putting green, when you come out, if you drive by the putting green and you see little tees or things on the putting green, I'm gonna start putting, we're gonna start putting some things out there. Now what we put out there, the tour players are practicing every single day for hours. Now, if you see it, you just might want to walk over and go, what the hell is this? And see if, if, because if you just randomly hit things and just randomly hit balls, you're going to just be randomly good. If you start having some structure to what you do and you control certain variables, you are going to get better. 
The reason people don't get better is they don't take control of the things they even have control of. And so your random access to information. So you're very consistent at being inconsistent. And then you go, why can't I get better? Well, you, you don't even control the things that you need to control. Everybody has a checklist. All of you, if I, if I ask your businesses and what you do, what, what do you do? Or what did you do? I'm retired. All I do is play. Okay, what did you do? I was a lawyer. I, yeah. He just looks like a lawyer. <laughs> I was a good, I was no, a good he guy. doesn't. He's too nice. Financing for hospitals and colleges. Okay, but here's what, a lawyer. So when you take on a case or you're getting ready, you have a checklist of things you go through. If you start down your checklist and something's not in place, do you skip and just go on? If you do, what happens? You're going, this may not turn out to be too good. <laughs> what most of you do not have in golf is any kind of a checklist to build your swing consistently. So you start one, and then some days you start on four, and some days you start on ten, and it really doesn't matter if two or three exist. Mainly because you don't even know what one, two, three, four, five, and six are. So if we can start to get you to where you see a pattern and you start to build your swing consistently, I'm telling you, the game gets so much easier, it's ridiculous. If you don't, and you randomly pick things, and you randomly watch stuff on TV, I mean, it's, it's all I can do to watch commentary on TV. Here's why. These guys are ex-tour players, most of them. It's not that the information is wrong that they're giving you, but it's relative to a certain level of hand-eye coordination you do not have. So all of a sudden, you're trying to pull off something that a savant with their hands can do, and you're trying to figure out why I can't do it. So it's not, it's not that it isn't relevant, it's just not relevant to the people that are watching it. As are most articles. Because they're one, one, one thing, it's not a whole picture. Okay? <laughs> we've, we've worn you out and cooled you off. Yeah, okay. So thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. We're so lucky to have Pam and now we're really fortunate to have you.